yeah, I'm still using the old camera because I got a camera for Christmas, but I have no tripod for it, and it shoots kind of crappy video. It's really good for pictures, but not so much for videos, so I don't know. Maybe after income tax return, I'll get a better actual webcam, but I did change the background and added a few, a few more lights, so maybe it won't be so dark. Um, I'm, I apologize. It's been a long time since I've done a video. First, there was the fallout after Halloween because doing a vlog every single day is very tedious. You'd think it wouldn't be, but running a household, taking care of a, a, a son and a husband and family, and yeah, I was kind of burnt out. And then Thanksgiving hit, and then the Christmas holiday season, and all that crap. But now it's the new year, so I'm going to try to be a little more uh, stick to it, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to be more consistent. That's what I'm looking for in posting vlogs. Um, this one's going to be kind of long because I have a lot of, uh, things to cover. Um, the first is actually a movie. It's called Sinister. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It's freaking awesome. There are twists and turns that I wasn't expecting that my daddy wasn't expecting. And you know us, we love horror movies. You can't really surprise us with horror movies anymore. But this one surprised us, so you should watch it. Uh, a couple of other ones that are pretty good are The Possession. That was really interesting. It's a, a it, it's the typical demonic possession thing, but instead of taking the Catholic Christianity view, it goes the Jewish route, and it's very awesome. Uh, another one I watched was The Apparition. Mm, not so great. I mean, it's okay for an hour and a half movie, but nah, take it or leave it. Uh, I want to see the one called Mama. It just came out this past Friday. Oh my God, that looks amazing. And the horror buff in me wants to see Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. So if anybody has seen these two movies, please comment down here, email me, message me, whatever. Let me know how it is, if it's actually worth going to go see, or if I should just wait for the DVD version. <clears throat> okay, so on to BDSM topics. Um, my daddy posted a vlog a couple of days ago about poly relationships. Um, I, uh, I've been involved in a number of them and I will be honest. The only reason I was in them was because I wanted to be with someone, you know, that whole, I don't want to be alone type of thing. And this is Luna. Say hello, Luna. This is my little kitty Luna. Um, She's decided she wants to be a parrot cat today. Uh, anyway, um, I am not a poly type of person. I am very monogamous. And the poly relationships I have seen have done nothing but breed jealousy and resentment. And I don't support them. I really don't. You know, if it works for you, awesome, more power to you, but nine times out of ten, we as submissives are extremely jealous. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. I mean, I know there are some that aren't, but the majority rules here. And when you have two submissives with one dominant, it becomes, well, what can I do to get his attention? What can I do to discredit the other submissive so that he'll drop her and just spend time with me? Uh, which isn't healthy for anybody. It's not healthy for either submissive. It's not help healthy for the dominant. It's just not good all the way around. Um, and I know somebody had posted on the comments that they said it was very closed-minded of my daddy to think the way he is. Well, maybe it is, but um, he's been in poly relationships. I've been in poly relationships. We were in a poly relationship together, and it didn't work. Um, it might work for a little while, but generally after time, it turns into, well, why do you need another girl? Why do you want to go see this other person? Um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it might have been closed-minded of him, but you can only give your opinion based on what you've experienced, and that's what we've experienced. Cat, what in the hell are you doing? <sighs> anyway, um, also, I've had some questions about the Fifty Shades of Grey book. Uh, I read a pretty in-depth synopsis of it. And all I can say is if if you read it and decide that you want to get into BDSM, that's awesome. But please don't think that that's the benchmark for the BDSM community. That would be like saying you want a sex life just like what's written in Harlequin Romances. 
everyone knows it, that they're not like that. You don't have relationships like that. It's the same thing. It's a very fantasized version of the scene. It's got elements of truth to it, but it's just too too glamorized for me. I, I just I did not like it. I will not read it in its entirety. It's I don't read housewife porn. And that's what I, I classify it as. Uh, considering it started off as Twilight fan fiction, vampires don't sparkle. Period. I'm sorry. My uh, my daddy loves the Twilight series. I cannot stand it because Stephanie Meyer completely obliterated the vampire mythos. And I am a huge vampire fan. I've always loved vampires, always will. You cannot tell me that a creature of the night, his only downfall is that he sparkles. Sorry, I'm not buying it. That Vampires are supposed to be scary, not emo. Anyway, uh, so moving on, um, I got an email from someone stating that they classify themselves as a dominant, however they have feelings of wanting to submit to a woman. Well, then you've got to think, well, are you really a dominant or are you a switch? Because dominants generally do not enjoy being submissive in any way, shape, or form, but this person goes on to say that it's, from what I can tell, that it's purely a sexual type of fantasy and that's cool but if you're gonna have a submissive because you are a dominant but you still want to fool around with someone so that she can dominate you but you have problems with power power exchange I think you really need to rethink your position in the whole thing because you can't you can't be a dominant and want to be used by someone but not be a submissive. It's like wanting to have your cake and eat it too. You know, you really need to to think about what your position is and if you decide that yeah you are a switch, awesome. Make sure you communicate that with your submissive though. Uh, because like my, my daddy is a switch. However, he and I have talked about it and I cannot nor will I ever be able to watch him submit to someone. Because that's just, in in my eyes, he's my dominant. He's my master. He's my alpha. He's my daddy. And to see him submit to someone else, I already know that that would make me jealous as all hell. I, I won't make any bones about it. I can't handle that. Now we have toyed around with the idea of me switching because there is a little, like this big, between my fingernails, part of me that could switch. But I don't know if I could do it on a regular basis. It's just too weird for me. I, I just can't. I've been a submissive for so long. So anyway, then I had someone ask me about professional dominatrixes. Dominatrices? I don't know. I don't know what the... A, a professional dominatrix. There we go. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know a whole lot about them. I've seen a couple of documentaries, but, you know, nothing in depth. I know they're out there. Um, I really can't give you any suggestions on local ladies because I am so not local to where you are. Um, the best bet would be to try Google or try to talk to someone in your local community to see if they know someone. Um, as far as I can tell, they're pretty legit and they will do whatever you pay them to do, but it's not, I don't know. If you're just looking to get your jollies off for every once in a while, that's fine, but if you're looking for a long-lasting relationship, I would steer clear of someone you have to pay to do it because while you may be emotionally invested, if one day they decide they're getting out of the business, you're screwed. You know, that's just my personal opinion. Um, also had another viewer uh, write to me and ask me if it was okay for her to be in a relationship because she's only, uh, be in a DS relationship because she's only newly turned 18. Um, I really don't think they're once you become an adult at 18, I don't really think there's an age limit, so to speak, that you can start getting involved in the DNS stuff type stuff. Do I think you should jump in feet head first into a full-fledged DNS relationship with one person and never experience anything else? Absolutely not. 
Um, just like in the vanilla world, I think you need to date around. I think you need to find what makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy. Um, you know, if you find that certain someone that you want to submit to, rock on. That's awesome. But don't think that just because you're 18 and some guy says, oh, you're going to be my submissive, that you have to be. We're not doormats. I don't care if you're 18 or 80. Submissives are never doormats. And any master that tells you you have no say because you're a submissive, you stand up, tell them they are full of shit and walk away. Because we are allowed to have a voice. We are allowed to have an opinion. Now, you can be respectful about it, but if it comes down to you're going to do this or, you know, I'm going to punish you even though it's goes against your hard limits or it's something you're not comfortable with, screw that. Stand up for yourself. Don't be a fucking doormat. I hate that and I'm sorry I'm cussing a lot, but nothing ticks me off more than submissives who are doormats. I'm like, seriously, you don't have to just lay down and take whatever some guy's going to give you because you think you're not going to get anybody else. Screw that. I've been there. You can move on. You've seen my daddy. We're perfectly happy. But I went through a period where I was with someone just because I was miserable and I didn't want to be alone. I didn't think I would ever do any better. So screw that. Stand up for yourself. If you find your your master at 18, 28, 38, 58, 88, 98, 108, I don't care. You know, when you find the one, you'll know. And that's what's cool about it. And if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't, well, then you break up and you start over and you move on. It's just like the vanilla world. Um, someone also asked me on where they could start to find a dom. Um, the best place to look, honestly, is in your local community. Uh, even in my little podunk town where I live, there is a community nearby that, that they are nice enough people, but their, you know, their age range is a little on the upper end from mine. So it, that was a little hard to get in touch with people, but you can try on FetLife and look for people that are in your area. Um, use Google. You know, there are... You know, there's Collar Me and OK Cupid, I think, is one. Um, just be careful because, you know, there's pervs and morons everywhere. So, uh, I was asked to define what a sub, a dom, and a mistress is. Okay, a submissive. Um, how do I put this in the words? Um, a submissive is someone who is willing to give up the reins of control in their life, be it every aspect of their life the bedroom aspect of their life or bits and pieces here and there um, where they either don't have to make any decisions for themselves or they make limited decisions for themselves or you know they there's just a few decisions that aren't made for them like in my case I make all my own decisions granted I run them past my daddy first but I'm still pretty much in control of that aspect of my life essentially he is in control of my life in the bedroom to an extent and I still show him respect in public and I do things for him and like he goes to work I take care of the house those are our jobs you know for all intents and purposes you could classify me as a domestic um, you know with fringe benefits of getting to, to sleep with the head of the household which is always awesome anyway uh, so a submissive is someone who is willing to give up control um, be it 24-7 only in the bedroom, only during playtime. It differs from person to person. Uh, a dominant. Uh, okay, that can either be a dom, a dominant as in a male, or a dame as in a female, uh, which is uh, which is the person that takes control of the situation, the person, the place, whatever. Um, they are to take care of their submissive, uh, be it either. You know, it just depends on the situation. You know, if you're living together, okay, or is the dominant in control of paying the bills and leaving a list of chores for the submissive to do, or is it just in the bedroom type of thing? You know, pull the hair, smack the butt, tell them what to do, throw them around, manhandle them, whatever. It really just depends. <clears throat> and, and, you know, it's either he the dominant or she the dominant. It can go either way. Uh, mistress. 
The problem with mistress is that there are multiple meanings to mistress. There is mistress as in like master and mistress, as in they are the dominant. And that's fine. But there's also mistress as in um, the other woman who is having an affair with a married man. So I really don't know what mistress you mean. I'm assuming you mean a female dominant, which can be a dame or a mistress. Most of them go by mistress because dame is kind of a, a uh, old school term uh, and old, not old school, old guard term, which is how I was taught. So, but that's that. Um, I had somebody ask me about setting boundaries. I can't really tell you a whole lot about that because that's a specific issue that's different in every relationship you know you just need to sit down with your dominant and explain okay these are my hard limits I will not do A, B, C, or D under any circumstances but E, F, G, and H I might be able to if we go about it slowly and in the right way you know um, that's really the best way to do it open and honest communication um, already talked about jealousy it happens submissives most of the time are generally jealous people be it male or female I've seen it on both sides um, unfortunately there's not a whole lot you can do about it uh, as long as the dominant is supportive and reassuring um, and that'll help uh, over dependent tendencies um, I'm assuming you mean codependent because I have a lot of experience with that because I am extremely codependent um, I will be the first person to admit it and it is a hard thing to deal with both on my part and my daddy's part he understands that I'm codependent and I try to do my best to avoid being too clingy or too needy but sometimes like when it's that time of the month or I'm really stressed it goes completely out of control and there's nothing I can do um, it's hard to deal with codependent tendencies um, especially again if you're going to be in a poly situation if you're with someone who's codependent that will make it explode because that just triggers neuroses which makes people freak out and makes everybody jealous and upset and it's such a pain in the butt um, and then I was asked about age play again I don't have a lot of experience with age play because while I do consider myself a baby girl or a middle if I have to put an age on it um, I really don't get into the whole age play because that crosses a taboo line that I am not comfortable with. You know, um, yeah, I do act 16, 17 from time to time, but that's about where it stops. You know, I, I don't I do not do the whole diaper, pacifier, sippy cup, baby bed, baby clothes type of thing. If you do, awesome. Um, but I don't have a lot of experience with it and I won't ever have any experience with it because that's a hard limit for me. I absolutely will not. So I'm sorry I can't give you a whole lot of information on it. But so, okay, I have rambled for 18 minutes. So I think I'm about done. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe down here. Um, leave me an email on Gmail. Leave me a message on FetLife, YouTube. Whatever you feel is necessary, I will answer your questions, and I promise I'll make more videos more often. Y'all have a great day. Love y'all. Bye-bye.